Hello, and welcome to another video. Today we have a box. Not just one box, two boxes. The other one is on the floor and will be opened in a little bit. But before we open this box, I want to tell you where all the stuff from this box came from. You see, there's a computer store down in Dallas, Texas called Computer Reset. And well, just the other weekend, I was able to go down there and explore the massive warehouse of just all sorts of old computer stuff. It's been a while since the store has been being liquidated, so there's not as much stuff as maybe you've seen in other videos, but there's still tons and tons and tons of stuff there. It's still just way overwhelming. So I can open up this box and the other one and go through all the stuff I found at Computer Reset. Alrighty, let's get the sucker open and see what's inside. All right. Let's see what we got. First off, we have a book about Windows 3.1, the complete guide to Windows 3.1, along with copies of MS-DOS and Windows 95, or at least the certificate for DOS and 95 does come with the disk and even an Internet Explorer disk. Um, so yeah, if anyone wants to use these uh, OEM keys, um, I guess it's okay. I don't know if Microsoft's going to care about them. Also, I've never seen a certificate like that for DOS, only really for Windows. Next, we have some games. We have Caesar's Palace here. The floppy disk is inside, still sealed. And an also still sealed copy of a trivia game for the IBM computer. It says it requires a IBM color display, PC Junior, or color TV, and it works with the PC, XT, portable PC, or AT. So this should be fun to, uh, to check out. I wonder how many of these questions I won't be able to answer. Oh, this is fun. This is still sealed. I could open this. This is actually a copy of Lotus 123. There was a whole box of these little sealed mailers and we opened up one of them to see what was inside and it was a copy of Lotus 123 on five and a quarter inch floppy disk. So I might just keep this kind of sealed because I think it's kind of funny. Next we have some cards. First off we have a Promise, a PCI RAID controller here. It's got some RAM on it, a processor, and even its own what looks to be like a Dallas clock chip, except made by Benchmark. I have one of these, but not one this kind of ridiculous, so I don't know if I have any real use for it, but it'll be fun to have. We also have another PCI card. This is just your kind of generic 3Com, Etherlink 3, Ethernet card, not even a generic, just, you know, common. I grabbed this because it's nice to have another Ethernet card with a ROM socket on it. Next, we have two MCA cards. Now, you might recognize these if you've seen any other videos I've done, but this and the other one. And this are drive controllers for the IBM PS2. There was one of these in my PS2 Model 50, and I bought a couple extras trying to swap them out with different drive controllers, different hard drives, trying to get them to work, but nothing wound up working, and I wound up putting a SCSI controller in there instead. So I only grabbed these two because there was a whole box of these MCA cards. I figured I'd just grab a few more of them. I don't know if I'm going to ever use them, but they're it's fun to have more MCA stuff. Um, next up in the box is this Pentium 2 Xeon. Now I think I have a board that can use this. I don't remember all the stuff I showed in previous videos that I collected. So I don't remember if I have a board for this, but I might have something I can use to run this Xeon. Some 30 pin EDO RAM, 
and some more 30 pin RAM. This actually says Intel on it. I was hoping to find some 72 pin RAM, but all I was able to find was some 30 pin RAM, so I guess that's always good to have. Next we have two five and a quarter inch floppy drives. I grab these because as you can see they are much thinner than your standard floppy drive. They're much thinner so I thought it'd be fun to have. I don't know if they'll fit into a normal case or if you need a special like adapter for these to fit into a case. These both they compact on them so I imagine they were for a compact computer. I wonder if you could stack two of them like that and fit them into a normal slot. I don't know. don't know if any of them work but Next we have some more cards. In here we have an Acer branded IDE card. This is a, I mean ISA card, but this is in fact an IDE slash floppy controller. We have another IDE controller. This would be kind of your just standard floppy hard drive serial I.O. controller you'd find in most computers. Actually along with this I also have another little serial port header that came with it. Yet another controller card. This one just says IDE and floppy. Those are always, they're always just useful to have. Never know what machines you might need any of those on. And then Next we have something kind of interesting. This would have had a hard drive attached to it. It's a hard card missing its hard drive. I do actually have the other bit of metal that would go here. Then your hard drive would screw onto these two metal plates here and connect to the cables here. I see two cables here, so I'm guessing this was for like an MFM drive. So I don't know if I have a drive that I could actually use this, but it's kind of cool looking. Um, some other stuff that I grabbed as well. Oh, here's the screw that goes with that little metal bracket. Another thing I grabbed was this kind of sad mist box. It's actually empty. There's actually nothing inside of it. And when I grabbed this, I was told by some of the volunteers that it's been sitting there for a while and people have grabbed it and passed it up. And I just, I don't know, I just figured I'd take it just because nobody else did. And I mean, why not? The sides actually look pretty good. So if I were to put it on a shelf just on the side, it would look not bad. So it could be good for decoration. And then kind of surprisingly, um, the friend I was with was looking through all the drawers in Computer Reset, including some of the drawers behind the front desk and found just a bag of these little plastic bow ties. I don't, I don't know why. I don't know how long these were there or who put them there, but me and my friend each grabbed one. So I guess I found this there. <laughs> Stuff in the box were some things that I was going to Computer Reset in hopes to find. In my video showing stuff from the VCF swap meet, I got a case that needed a power supply and here's a power supply. This is an XT power supply with nice big switch on the side. So this should actually fit in there. I have no idea if this works and this is by a company called Skynet. So I guess I'll have to take this apart and just check that it looks good inside before I turn it on. Um, because I am uncertain about whether these power supply, whether that power supply works or not, I grabbed another one. This is also an XT power supply. Nice switch on the side. So this one actually has an IBM part number on it. I don't know if either of these work, obviously, and so this, this one says 130 watts. I don't know the wattage of the other one, so I hope 130 watts or whatever the other one is is powerful enough to power. I don't know what I'm gonna put in there. Maybe like, uh, I can move like the 286 into that case with this power supply. This might be good enough to run that. I don't know the power limits of like certain motherboards, like 286s and 286s. So I don't know exactly what board I can power with this, but at least I can put this into the case and then figure it out from there. And now on to box number two, the heavier box. First up in this box, we have a still new in box 
Tandy disc drive adapter, three and a half to five and a quarter. It's always nice to have some of these. You never know when you might need them. So inside, we have a manual, some more foam. We have the adapter, along with a little front plate for your floppy drive, and then some screws. Also inside here, the laptop. AST laptop. This is an AST Ascente J. So I don't know if this laptop works and if I open it up, you can see that the screen is, yeah. So when I did some research on this, what it seems happened is the polarizing film on the screen has kind of melted and also kind of has like a really like vinegary kind of smell. So what I need to do is I need to take the screen out, remove this polarizing film and put on some new polarizing film and hopefully that should fix the screen. As for the rest of the laptop, I don't know if it works. There's no like RAM or hard drive in it though. This laptop does have like onboard RAM so it doesn't have any expansion RAM but that's okay. And and finally, in this box, we have the reason this box was so heavy. This is a Compaq Desk Pro 386S. And I think this is what system those floppy drives would go in. You can kind of see the front there. Looks like it would fit those sort of half height floppy drives. Compaq Desk Pro 386S, again, no idea if this works. I'm gonna need to open it up and you know check that the capacitors are okay, check the power supply, clean off all this crap off of the top. But oh, I guess I guess I forgot one thing in this box. Uh, there's one last thing in here. This is a KVM. This unfortunately needs cables that I don't have. Maybe those cables were at computer reset, but I didn't find them. So you connect your keyboard and mouse uh, monitor here, and then you would connect your monitor here. The yellow here needs a special cable that would actually break out into a VGA cable and USB. So both VGA and USB would travel over that. So I don't know if I have those cables here and I couldn't find them at computer reset. So, and that is everything that I got a computer reset quite a bit. Maybe not as much as I expected, but maybe more than I expected. I don't really know what I expected, but I did grab quite a bit of stuff. So some of this stuff will definitely become videos. I'm going to try to probably work on the AST laptop first, and then the Desk Pro will come after that. So thanks for watching and stay tuned for more videos about all of this stuff.